all right guys how are you all doing i'm fiesta here and today we have asus a620 m motherboard bios has been spotted and it also has no pcie gen 5 support power color rx 7900 xtx gpu has been overclocked to 3.2 gigahertz 650 watts using stock cooling gigabyte claims next generation amd ryzen am5 desktop cpus are coming later this year amd hybrid phoenix apus to feature performance and efficiency cores and lastly we have amd confirming their fidelity FX Super Resolution 3 FSO3 and that will be open source. So firstly we have a hardware lux forum here and the user here Mr. AMD Rooks basically uh, posted this that if you want to make something out of it basically Asus Tough Gaming A620M Plus spec leak here and not really spec leak it's only the PCIe link speed here and as you can see there will be one of them PCIe X16 Gen 4 M.2 uh, we're also going to be Gen 4, two of them here, and chipset is a Gen 3, PCIe X1 will be also Gen 3, and PCIe X1, another one, which will be Gen 3, as you can see, there's no Zen 5 support here, so, again, A620M kind of makes sense, because it's a lower-end board, and you can't really overclock too much here, so, and also, like, this doesn't support Gen 5 kind of makes sense. Next up, we have a WCC AppTech forum here basically uh, posting this and that AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX GPU has been overclocked to 3.4 GHz on liquid cooling and also hitting 650 watts. But there's another thing that it's also hitting 3.2 GHz with using the own normal cooler, basically. Yeah, that's kind of strange. So Mr. DeBauer here basically uh, overclocked this GPU. And well, he got the performance right here. If you zoom into it, we're looking at 7900 XTX getting 3.2. And that's the power cooler liquid travel. Basically, it's a stock cooler, which is still a liquid cooled card. So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, using stock cooler or not. It's literally liquid cooling. So yeah, that's you need to keep that in mind. It's reaching 3.2 right here in this test. And as you can see, the card is reaching around 1,400 points here in 3 mark times by extreme and it's also using the i5-13600K and it's quite close to RTX 4090 here like very close not too far off but still lagging behind but not bad but also there's a caveat is and that is that it's also using 650 watts basically double the TBP as you can see 355 watts so yeah it's quite close to double and in normal game sense as you can see like it's reaching 3.38 basically 3.4 close to 3.4 you could say so yeah it's it has been overclocked crazy and it's also using just the liquid cool which is of course the stock cooler but again it's not just a stock fan cooler it's a liquid cool so you need to keep that in mind so you could just say that it's a liquid cooled card reaching 3.38 gigahertz which is not bad but also the wattage is quite higher like double the what is 650 watts okay that's gonna take a lot of juice out of your power supply so i don't think that's optimal but at least it can reach and if you're interested you can overclock it next up we have andres Schilling just posted this and that well gigabyte maybe probably have leaked it is that the next generation of AMD Ryzen desktop processor that will come out later this year will also be supported on this platform, which is coming from directly from the Gigabyte website here, and basically they just probably leaked it, and that is the next generation of AMD Ryzen desktop processor. What is the next generation of AMD Ryzen desktop processors? Not 7000 series because it's already been released, so there is possibility that Zen 4 Refresh or Zen 5 will be released later this year. I think Zen 4 refresh is basically the X3D parts. That is what I'm guessing. So it kind of makes sense to have Zen 5 releasing later this year. But then again, isn't it quite earlier to speak about Zen 5 already? Because we already know that Zen 5 will be supporting on AM5 platform. But isn't it too early to, you know have zen 5 like it's it's quite weird but then again zen 4 refresh is already here in my opinion zen 4 refresh is basically the well the x3d part or maybe i could be wrong maybe there could be some zen 4 refresh product coming soon later this year but yeah we'll see i mean if they can manage to release zen 5 later this year it's gonna be like quite too fast and also surprising i guess we have to wait and see next up we have also got a leak here basically and that 
AMD Phoenix processor that will be launching, which is the APU that might might have performance score and efficiency core according to this leak here basically if you look at the other value description here the performance score and efficiency core both of them are written here so that's kind of interesting again as a zen 4 core which kind of makes sense this is the phoenix processor and well the apu we're talking about and it will be coming with performance and efficiency both of them basically they're following the part of intel here and kind of makes sense because it's an apu and apus i mean they are much suited for laptop you know so kind of makes sense. They might be having performance and efficiency cores, though they're not a mobile chip. But for normal desktop usage, who, who doesn't want some performance and efficiency core? Because efficiency, you know, kind of that, that, that architecture kind of useful, you know, in terms of efficiency, because that's why the efficiency core exists. But then again, let's see what happens with the Phoenix processors. Again, there's are the APUs we're talking about. And lastly, we have AMD GPU open, basically just introduced the Fidelity FX super resolution sdk 3.0 basically and yeah basically they're going open source surprise i don't think so it is gonna it's gonna happen anyway episode 3 is already here and the sdk is available for the developers to download and then you know utilize it in their games so that's really nice we also have more uh episode related stuff here which i didn't expect they will release so let's look into it shall we so as you can see they have uh introduced a radiant developer tool suite with suit the way you spell it i don't know but yeah the you can you optimize game performance with this tool here so interesting here they also got the ryzen processor software optimization it's also another thing that they're introducing direct storage optimizing load time again that's coming from microsoft here which they are probably giving support so yeah basically direct storage is basically gonna support uh amd gpus and cpus maybe and of course the fidelity fx sdk went open source so you can just if you're a developer of course you can just download it and not only that it also has multiple support here as you can see the fidelity fx had mit license which correct for the sdk you can get that open source yes consistent user experience well no not, not that wasn't the case but now you will have a consistent user experience which is nice nice clean architecture that was missing they have brought it the clean architecture i wonder how clean that is only the developers would know easy to use api they're saying that this is much easier to use so interesting high quality documentation basically a guide that is much better clearer so that's a you know that's a good thing director support 12 of course kind of makes sense vulcan support they're already confirming that vulcan will be supported in fidelity fx sdk even for the Xbox support and easy to integrate kind of makes sense because they already mentioned because it's easy to use the API, so easy to integrate kind of makes sense. Shader compilation tool is also available with Fidelity FX SDK here. So yeah, they're giving a lot of support for the developers. So that's nice. And as I mentioned, they have more goodies with them. And that is Fidelity FX depth of field. It kind of is strange that, uh, well, not strange. NVIDIA is also, you, you know, using the ray tracing, RTX path tracing, the latest uh, released from a NVIDIA here. And they've also introduced many other things as for NVIDIA. But for AMD, this is the first time we're looking at Fidelity FX depth of field, Fidelity FX lens, and Fidel Fidelity FX blur. And kind of makes sense uh, because Fidelity FX is also their branding for AMD, of course. They're also introducing the Fidelity FX hybrid reflections. I wonder this this is more for you know ray tracing uh, counterpart. Probably I, you could just say that right because they're naming it in a different way. Fidelity FX hybrid reflection and Fidelity FX hybrid shadows. And as I said, they're also introduced the Fidelity FX Brightslizer. I could be terribly wrong spelling this word. It, that's really hard to spell. So yeah, that, that is something. That is a real-time sparse distance fields for games. So I wonder what that is. I need to read that properly. So yeah, but that that is something that we should look into. And of course, the final product that we are waiting for, temporal upscaling that will be supported with the Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3. And well, it's here. It's better be way better because they have some claims. If you look into it, FSO, FSO 3 is using two times upscaling and frame interpolation just like DLSS 3. So yeah, they're taking the same part as DLSS 3 and that is the frame interpolation they have introduced it. 
So yeah, interesting. And as I said, the claims, they are claiming up to twice the performance compared to FSR 2.0. So that's a lot of performance. They've also reduced the latency. And of course, easy transition because you can easily transition from FSR 2 to FSR 3. As I said, easy to implement and permissive licenses. So yeah, that's other uh, corporal stuff there. But yeah, basically they do have these three claims, especially this one up to twice the performance compared to FSR 2. So I'm quite interested if that is the case. Only time will tell. And of course, the developers need to implement them in the games to further look into FSR 3. Until then, we have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Alright, that is it for today. What do you think about episode 3? They are literally following the path of NVIDIA here, basically. Kinda, not entirely, because they have, you know, naming the hybrid technology that we are bringing in. Fidelity FX hybrid shadows and reflections. NVIDIA's ray tracing or the path tracing that NVIDIA has introduced. I am quite interested because there's a lot of technologies that uh, they've introduced. And of course, the main... Th uh, thank you, the episode 3.0. It is gonna be similar to DLSS 3, and well, we'll see how it performs. Until then, have a good day, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.